Hey guys, so I thought I would do a video because it's been such a long time and I thought I would do one of my favorite topics to talk about and that is books and I'm going to do my five favorite books of 2015. Um, so I pledged to myself and to my Goodreads account that I would read three books in 2015 and as of today, which is January 30th, January 30th, December 30th, uh, 2015, I have read 24. Um, pretty good feat for myself, because I literally just finished one, like, two days ago. Um, but probably not plausible for me to read six more books in a day in a bit, because uh, I work tomorrow and stuff. But, um, yeah, I'm still very proud of myself for reading 24 books this year. Um, I did make the same pledge last year, and I think I read about 25 or 26, so, uh, still a bit down, but sometimes I get in slumps where I don't want to read books and stuff, so. But we'll go over my five favorite books of 2015. There's not really a particular order. Um, I do have a favorite of the bunch of all the books I read in 2015, which is included in this, which I will say when I get to that. But um, we'll start with the what I have so far. The first book I have is, I don't currently have my copy of it because my sister borrowed it, but it is Mindy Kaling's Why Not Me. And it was hilarious. That's why I loved it so much. She is one of my favorite actresses on television. I think she's an, definitely an inspiring person because she is, um, like, bigger size. Like, pl I don't want to say she's plus size, but she's a bigger size woman. And um, I just think it's so, like, refreshing to see someone who talks about that. And, you know, in her interview, she's hilarious and she's just a funny woman and I love the mini project and stuff. So, um, her first book I have uh, is, Everyone Hanging Out With is Everyone Hanging Out Without Me. Um, and Why Not Me is... I find it so much more funnier than that. I think um, it dealt a lot with different topics and stuff, like her chapter on love was hilarious. It delved more into her personal life and stuff and her, her background in like television and stuff, I felt. Um, and it was just every chapter I was like laughing and my sister said that she was like peeing herself laughing, like she was thought it was hilarious. Um, so definitely top book. Um, the next book I have... I read earlier this year, um, and it is Tammy Hogue's The Ninth Girl. I picked it up on a whim at um, Chapters because I was looking for like a good, like, thick crime novel. Um, I love me some crime series. I that's like my favorite type of TV show is crime. Um, so this was a really good book, and it was the first Tammy Hogue novel, novel I've ever read. And it was about um, that there's a current killer that's on the loose. Um, they call him Doc Holiday because he kills people on holidays, and a uh, woman turns up dead on New Year's Eve, and so they think that's the book of Doc Holiday, and then you delve more in the story, and it, is it actually Doc Holiday? And um, it was really creepy because the girl was from like, she is as if she was like poured in acid or something, so that was really cool too because you know who would do that to someone? It was a really good book, and um, I was pointing out to that the. the Detective Sam Kovac and Nick, Nikki Liska. There's like a series of novels from Tammy Hogue that she does with those characters. Um, so I read another girl, another girl, another book by her that involves them this year, Dust to Dust. But the Ninth Girl was really good. I could not put it down. Um, it's like almost 500 pages, and I could not put it down. But it was like a really good book to read, and um, yeah, it's made me like want to read more for novels. Um, so I'm happy that I found that. The next one is by Jodi Picoult, and it's called Leaving Time, and I'm a huge fan of Jodi Picoult. She was one of my favorite writers when I was a teenager. I own like eight of her books. I probably write more than that. Um, she's a very, like, I think, good novelist for teenagers and stuff, even though she's in the adult section because she, I don't know, it was a, like, there's other novels and authors I like now more than Jodi Picoult, but she was a very good writer to get hooked on. Um, I like her novels because majority of her novels, each chapter switches to a different character that's involved in the story. Um, the same with this is, um, Jenna has never known her mother. Her mother, like, disappeared from the hospital when she was, like, two, um, and her, they lived on, like, a elephant conservatory, conserve, um, reserve, I'm not sure what the word is, um, and so... She, like, enlists, like, a detective to help her know what happened to her mother because there was, like, a big incident with the elephants that night that she disappeared and stuff. Um, and I did not suspect the ending at all. 
for like the last couple pages, but it's super well written. It's super sad, <laughs> like all of the Colts novels, but it was really good. I haven't read one of her books in like, I'm gonna say like four years or so, so this one was a really good one to get back into it, um, and I really enjoyed this novel. Um, my friend didn't enjoy it as much, but I was like, it's probably one of my favorites. So um, yeah, I read it in like a day, and again, it's like, ooh, almost 500 pages, but this was really good, and I could not pin down, and um, again, most of her novels are really sad, so uh, get prepared for yourself there. <clears throat> the second to last book I have is a surprising one to make this list, but it is um, Ignite Me by, I'm going to butcher her name, but Tahira Mafi. So, the whole series I read this year, that's not on my list, but this book is, and only because I got this for Christmas. I read it in like a day and a half. Um, and the reason it's on this best books because um, Juliet's character development in this book is so good. Oh my goodness. I only picked up Shattered Man of Wind because I was like, I want to read a book series that has a female lead. And the first book is quite <clears throat> awakening when you <laughs> don't usually read an adult novels. It's very choppy, I find, and I her writing, I got used to it because Juliet was locked away for a long period of time, so I think her writing, since she's a, uh, the first, the, the narrator, um, and it's in first person, I think that her writing it in that sense was because that's Juliet's train of thought, um, but it's very choppy to read. Um, the love aspect of it, you know, what have you, I did enjoy it, obviously, but I was like super happy and super surprised at how well she was written in this novel and how well she like grew as a character that I have to put in this list because like when I was reading it I was like so happy for her I was like her own personal cheerleader Juliet because like she just you know finally stands up for herself and it's like no this is what I want to do you can't stop me you can't make me do this because you used to be my boyfriend and stuff and it was like you just, you don't really see that a lot in young adult novels, I find. Um, and so, at least the ones that I read. <laughs> so I was really happy to have this book and it was awesome. So overall, I'll probably recommend the trilogy to people, but mostly because the not last book is great. And finally, the um, best book of the year, my number one favorite, is Jillian Flynn's Sharp Objects. Um, so Jillian Flynn is the author of Gone Girl and... Gone Girl is an amazing book, but of the three that I've read, I've read Dark Places as well. Sharp Objects is my favorite of the three. Um, it is, I think, Gone Girl is acclaimed because it's this crazy conspiracy and, you know, that happens and everything, whatever. But Sharp Objects, I just felt connected to it on a personal level because Camille is a very flawed human being and she um, self-harmed and stuff. Um, and it was just a very realistic take on a character who was thrust into a world where she has to kind of identify and report on a murder in her hometown um and she was still relatable in that crazy sense of it um also there's like two separate mysteries going on and you don't really, don't really realize you're unsolving the second mystery until the very end and all the other characters are like assholes pretty much and that was really good to see kind of refreshing to see how Camille dealt with it instead of being like you know always seen it for herself she clearly doesn't because she does self-harm but um it was it's an amazing book and it's tiny compared to Gone Girl and um I could have read it probably in like three hours but I didn't because after every chapter you kind of feel like you have to um cleanse your mind in a sense because the novel is really creepy and, and Julian from writes really creepy too um because all of her novels involve some sort of murder or lack thereof I guess in Gone Girl but um it's very like creepy in a sense so I kind of had to like stop and be like okay I'm gonna go watch this video Pam is laughing um but it's a very great novel and I think that um it's it's not getting the recognition it deserves because Dark Places was made to a, a movie but it went straight to video. Um, and Gone Girl is obviously this acclaimed novel, and it should be, but um, Sharp Object is really amazing, and I love it so much, and I recommend it to everyone. Um, I literally do with, like, if you want to read a good novel, 
and like I recommended my friend and she really liked it and stuff it was just like if I'm gonna recommend a novel to someone that would be it I think that'd be my one novel to recommend so I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed this top five favorite books of 2015 and I look forward to reading lots next year as well so thank you and have a great new year's bye